It is now about a year since I received this FRA 400 telescope from ASCAR. So time to sum up my experiences with this telescope. The good and the bad in this video. Hey, this is Fear in the Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So this telescope is not new or spectacular, but still I feel in these days it got even much more relevance. And that's one thing we want to talk about. But before we do that, I would just like to tell you my experiences with this telescope. And we want to go to the computer and look at a few pictures that I shot with it. But just to start, let's sum up the facts again. It is a 400 millimeter focal length telescope. That's why it's called FRA 400. It has a speed of f 5.6, which is rather fast. And back focus doesn't matter. You simply screw the camera on it, you focus, and that's it. Everything's fine. And that's, for me, one of the big blessings. You know, I'm a little bit lazy. I like my mount without a meridian flip. And I like my scopes without back focus issues and without collimation issues. So for me, this is the perfect refractor. Now, when you remember a year ago when I did my first unboxing, the first experiences with it, I wasn't 100% sure if I'm happy or not. But what I've learned in a year, you know, the scope is not even the most important part. And this is general knowledge. The mount is much more important than the scope. And at this point of time where I did my first reviews, what did I do? I actually piggybacked my FRA 400 on my Celestron CPC 800 scope. And this was a recipe for disaster, obviously. In the meantime, I got a very, very good mount. I got a great camera with a Moravian C1X 2600. I got perfect filter with the Antlia 2.8 nanometer narrowband filters. So everything around this scope changed. And I think that I kept this scope and that I was not going for a Takahashi or whatever already tells a lot about it. Because when I look at the pictures now, and we will do that in a second, you will see they're perfect. But before we do that, just hardware-wise, I'm so happy with this scope. There is really nothing that I could complain. The focuser works perfectly with the EAF. It's very good to mount. There was never anything coming loose. As you also can see from a coloring point of view, even I use it quite a lot. I let it stand outside, even in summer heat, and it just looks as beautiful as on the first day. So hardware-wise, there is nothing that I can complain about. So now let's go to the computer. I will show you a few pictures and afterwards we come back here and then I tell you why I believe this telescope is much more relevant than it ever was. Okay, let's have now a look in Pix Inside at a few pictures. And the first thing, if you remember, this is from my first review of the FRA 400. The thing that I kind of complained about were the halos. And especially Alnitak, I think it's, it's huge. So now let's have a look at the horsey head shot with my new setup. And you see that the halos are almost gone. Even Alnitak, I think it's almost no halo. So this was definitely not the scope. <laughs> It was most likely the filters, but um, this shows now nicely um, how well this uh, scope is working. I think when we zoom in also structure-wise, it's just beautiful to see the subtle differences in the nebulosity. Next, we want to have a look here at Andromeda. This is just the blue channel here. Nothing done, no BXT, nothing. So if you open this in the Aberration Inspector, these are the extremes. Look here at the stars, they look really nice, they look round. There's a little bit of egginess here, but I think we can agree these are mostly round. 
So let's do the same here with the elephant nebula. This is just the blue channel again, so the nebulosity is not really visible. But we want to do again some pixel peeping. So here again with aberration inspector, for example here, they look very round. When we look in the middle, they're very round. And even here on the right side, they're mostly round. But what I want to show you now is just these pictures, just a blue channel. No gradient removal, nothing. Just PXT over it. So, so this is the picture with PXT applied. And now the aberration inspector again. And well, it is quite clear. But these stars are now perfectly round. There is nothing to complain anymore about it. These stars are as round as stars can be. So bottom line is, without BXT, there is minimal eccentricity on the outer skirts. As soon as you run BXT over it, they're perfectly round. Okay, we're back. So let's sum it up. We have a scope that is hardware-wise, perfect. There's really nothing to complain about. We have a scope that shoots actually perfect pictures already before BXT, but with BXT there is just nothing to complain anymore about the results. And I think there I mentioned it already, BXT. And as much as some people don't like that, but PXT has leveled the ground telescope-wise. I firmly believe that you take a scope which has the same focal length, which has the same f-stop as this FRA 400, and you let it run through BXT, that it is absolutely impossible to tell any difference at all, be it a Takahashi, be it an astrophysics, whatever. Now these obviously, I mean here refractors, and I mean with an APS-C sensor. I cannot judge here about full frame or even more, but I believe that even full frame, you might have a hard time finding any differences at all. And from that point of view that the FRA 400 is one of the cheapest scopes you can actually buy, and I mean, if you look now at the APO series of ASCAR, which is incredibly cheap compared to the other brands, there is really absolutely no reason anymore to buy a more expensive scope. So my conclusion after one year that I have the scope now is that I'm 100% happy with it. So I hope this was helpful. See you next time and clear skies. Thank you.